scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple therefore we decree and declare that our eyes are open our hearts are open to receive that you will grant us grace and capacity to rise to higher realms in the spirit in the name of jesus and that whilst your word comes forth tonight let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered turn every captivity around like the streams of the negev in the name of Jesus and we declare that as always you will be glorified and lifted in our midst for in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray amen and amen may God bless you in the name of Jesus I want to request that you lend me your attention tonight I'll be teaching on the topic the mandate the mandate along the lines of the theme um, I'm very passionate about helping to bring light and understanding to the body of Christ any Christian experience will remain a burdensome ritual unless at the instance of high level spiritual illumination the kingdom life was designed to only find expression at the instance of light hallelujah the Bible says in Genesis 1 and verse 2 it says and there was darkness and void the darkness covered everywhere and then the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord hovered round the face of the deep and verse 3 says and God said light Every other thing happened because of the presence of light hallelujah the Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man so when it has to do with the ministry of light it is for every man there are some things in the kingdom that the Bible says he gave unto some but when it has to do with access to light he says that light lighted every man hallelujah Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them this is a kingdom I repeat that thrives on the strength of light it takes more than desire to reign and maximize your Christian experience it takes more than a sincere and a well-intentioned heart hallelujah he says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i always like to quote this from amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light hallelujah so it takes more than desire it is the entrance of that light that empowers you by the spirit 
the word of god is the principal channel for the communication of that light and in john 1 5 the bible says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not in the name of jesus i pray that beginning from tonight and all through this conference let it be a feast of lights for you i'm praying for you that whatever level of darkness that has authorized pain and circles of tragedy bringing shame and pain to your christian experience and making it look as though the word were a lie the requisite level of light that will elevate you to that level of prophecy receive it in the name of jesus christ someone say light one more time say light when you drive in the night the color of your car does not matter when you drive in the night the size of your car does not matter when you drive in the night in fact the type of your car may not matter about the most important component as far as driving effectively in the night is concerned is the quality of the light you can be driving a rolls royce you can be driving the bentley provided there is no light you are in trouble the name of the car will not automatically cover for the absence of light hallelujah you can have a very very ugly looking car for sake of description the parts barely getting by but by any means if it has light in the night it will have dominion even above a brand new car that has a faulty light let me prophesy to someone again in the name of jesus may this conference unravel the mystery behind the darkness in your life and empower you with the keys that will grant you access to true dominion in the name of jesus christ listen now the bible says that was the true light that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty false light talks of a body of knowledge that may make you feel comfortable either because it is spiritual or because it is pleasant to your ears or because it is sociologically acceptable but it does not have any potency in the spirit to bring liberty that was the true light there are false lights that was the true light so I believe that this conference is also an opportunity for us to edit our spiritual understanding as far as the results we desire is concerned. What you know may not be what is needed to be known. Just because it is what you know does not mean that is what is required. Imagine that a student is writing an exam. Just because your answer is among the options does not mean it is the right answer. Are we together yeah so if it's a math um, example and you write you, you you got four as your answer and you check the options and find option a four you will tick a and believe because it was your answer it does not mean it's the right answer is the examiner that will now tell you no even though you got this your answer was there but it is not the answer you see the door you are trying to look for has a specific key the one you have may be a key but not the key to that door a house has many keys are we together now you may have the key to the living room and that key may not open the kitchen door if you want to relax in the living room happy for you but if you want to eat something in the kitchen you have a key but not the key that will open you many of you have keys but among the keys you have the key that is needed for this season it may not yet be in your hands i pray for you again in the name of jesus may god who is the helper of men deliver that key to your hand let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us let the weight of your glory 
let the weight of your glory in Jesus name amen and amen so we're looking at the subject the mandate first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 please let's look at a few scriptures first peter 2 and verse 9 the bible says but you are a chosen generation please say amen, amen. it calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people he says we have been mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light so apostle peter is teaching us here that we are a generation that was chosen a holy nation and that we have been given a mandate to show the praises of him that called us out of darkness into light second scripture please matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 jesus was teaching us on the subject of prayer and he said after this manner pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name verse 10 he says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come he's teaching the disciples how to pray and he says in your prayer your desire should be that the kingdom comes and then he says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven let's look at two more scriptures daniel 7 and verse 27 i'd like us to read this one together when we have it projected very quickly daniel 7 27 7 27 ready one to read and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him hallelujah now dominion is a concept that if dealt with in isolation to the bigger picture of kingdom come may not effectively bless and edify those who are learning that subject dominion as powerful as it is is not supposed to be discussed in isolation are we together now dominion only finds its relevance when it is connected to a purpose that is higher than it dominion as powerful as it is is not the end itself as you would be learning dominion is a means is a tool that helps to serve a bigger purpose so in discussing the subject of dominion we must be careful up front so that we do not narrow our understanding just to the concept of authority alone authority and dominion that is not connected to a higher and a bigger a superior kingdom purpose will end up um, even destroying the person who has that understanding hallelujah the bible is very clear as to the fact that god is a god of purpose that everything he does there is a purpose to it under the sun it was the preacher in ecclesiastes chapter 3 who said there is a purpose to everything even under the sun so god is a god of purpose he does not do anything anything at all just for the sake of it whatever god does it is because it is connected to a larger and a greater purpose in genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 where we get the whole idea of the creation of man 
down to 28 the bible says and god said let us make man right it says in our own image and after our likeness two very important words the image of god is a spiritual quality it is what makes god god you cannot see the image of god physically are we together now the image of god is that spiritual quality and then it says our likeness the word likeness means to function like us two hands stand on two feet one head so god made man in his image and he made man in his likeness and he says let them the man adam now have dominion over the fish of the sea he was not just talking of animals he was talking of realms and spheres are we together let them have dominion over the sea have dominion over the air have dominion over land and everything that creepeth upon it and so we see very clearly that it was at the back of the heart of god that man would reign over this side and this dimension of his kingdom but again i will tell you the purpose was not just to reign just for that sake everything in the kingdom is designed to reflect and to reveal the glory of god please write that down everything in the kingdom was designed to reflect and reveal the glory of god everything everything in the kingdom was designed to reveal and to reflect the glory of god that means anything created by god that stops reflecting his glory and stops revealing his glory is dead even if it is alive did you get that now everything in the kingdom this is a rule of thumb in studying the subject of authority and dominion and the kingdom you need to understand that everything in the kingdom was built and designed by god to reflect his glory and then to reveal his glory the plants man the entire creation reveals his glory if at any point in your life and your christian experience your life stops being a revelation of the glory of god it means something is wrong are we together now i wish i had the time i would have shown you in matthew chapter 6 remember matthew chapter 5 jesus began to teach uh, in what we call theologically the beatitudes and then when we start from verse 13 he's teaching the people now he says you are the salt of the earth are we together that if the salt has lost its saltiness where which shall it be salted again it is for no good are you seeing now the salt is there because of something it is doing if the salt is still there as a substance but loses that saltiness he said it is good for nothing except to be trodden under foot of men then it says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that they put it on top of a lampstand and it gives light to everyone who is in the room verse 16 now says let your light the word let there is permit allow by all means allow your light to so shine before not before angels let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and and so it does not stop at seeing your good deeds it does not stop at your light shining it says that they may see your good deeds and that means if they see your good deeds and they've not started glorifying god your good deeds are not good enough your good deeds must get to a point where it compels them to glorify your father who is in heaven are we together john chapter 15 and verse 8 jesus again was teaching and here's what he said he said um hearing is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit say much fruit one more time please say much fruit hearing that means this is how my father is glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples same john 15 when you go to verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained 
ordained you the word ordained means to legitimize your operation i have ordained you to go and bear fruits i'm showing you this scripture to buttress on this foundation that every man and everything created by god is supposed to reflect his glory and reveal his glory so that you know what to allow in your life and what to disallow does sickness reveal his glory does failure reveal his glory so anything in your life that does not sustain the power to reflect or reveal the glory of god becomes your assignment to get it out of your life are we together you verify the continuity of conditions or things in your life by their ability to reveal the glory of god so if god gives me 10 naira and that 10 naira can reveal the glory of god it means it is not unscriptural if i ask for more of it because i have found a space for the glory of god to be revealed through it are we together yes if having a child as a married woman gives an opportunity for the glory of god to be revealed it then means it is not unscriptural to pray that you take in listen everything in your life that fails to reveal the glory of god is a burden to you and a burden to the kingdom and you must stand in partnership with the holy spirit to get it out of your life for instance failure for instance mediocrity for instance ignorance for instance demonic oppression this it does not matter whether it carries a semblance of good we only test it against its ability to reveal the glory of god or otherwise if it cannot reveal the glory of god it has no ministry in your life let me repeat it again if it cannot reveal the glory of god it has no ministry in your life the prosperity that cannot reveal the glory of god has no ministry in your life the increase that has no ministry to glorify the i mean uh, uh, has an assignment to reveal the glory of god has no ministry it's not whether it is good or bad you do not test things using the indices of good or bad you test the presence or the absence of things in your life or allow for their continuity not because they are good or bad there are many good things that cannot reveal the glory of god even if it is good and it does not pass the test of revealing the glory of god you should get it out of your life because many people have been deceived and trapped by satan around good things so their lives are surrounded by and with good things but there is no revelation of the glory of god there is someone learning already i needed to place this as a foundation that god created everything to reflect and to reveal his glory to reflect and to reveal his glory to reflect and to reveal his glory including you that means everything god gives you and everything you pray for is only answered with respect to the degree to which it will reveal the glory of god if you say lord increase me he will not answer you just because you asked there is a system of vetting your desires using the reference of the revelation of the glory of god that is what guarantees answers because you see you will be learning that the power of god is only mandated to function within the jurisdiction of the will of god the power of god is not given the assignment to function arbitrarily for the power of god to be activated it must ensure that what it will be activated upon is within the jurisdiction of the will of god praise the name of the lord so the bible says god created man and decorated that man with such such glory and honor you find that expression in psalm 8 the psalmist was contemplating the goodness of god he says when i consider this and that from verse 5 he says what is man 
that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 says thou has made him a little lower than the word there is elohim you have made him a little lower than god you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and paul reiterating this scripture in hebrews chapter 2 he said in doing so you left nothing that was not under his feet that was how meticulous god went as far as the dominion of the saints is concerned so it is the will of god for every believer in christ to walk in dominion it is the will of god for every believer in christ to walk in dominion provided that dominion becomes a tool for the revelation of jesus dominion like every other thing is useless like salt would lose its sever if it does not translate to the revelation of god and now for us the believers the revelation of jesus christ why because jesus christ has come as the embodiment of god is that true the bible says he's the express image of the invisible god so let's discuss a few things and then we'll have some time to pray Believers according to scripture, let me just go straight to the point. According to scripture, the Bible reveals that believers have a twofold mandate. Please write it down. All believers, irrespective of what you do, irrespective of where you come from, irrespective of your, your pedigree, your you know, qualification and status, all believers have a twofold mandate as far as the kingdom life is concerned and let me run through them very quickly number one the first mandate that every believer has is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men the first mandate that every believer in christ has is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this has nothing to do with being a preacher this has nothing to do with being a man or a woman of god it has nothing to do with evangelism it is a mandate upon all men are we together the first mandate given to all men in the kingdom in order of priority is to establish the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men hallelujah this entire project is captured in what we call the gospel of salvation please write the gospel of salvation theologically speaking there are seven dimensions of the gospel but primarily the one that is responsible for saving men is called the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love please listen carefully a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ man and creation being the object the object of that love are we together that when we believe in jesus we receive the life of god this is the gospel of salvation a revelation of the father's love expressed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and then the entire creation being the object of that love hallelujah and the bible says by believing that message by believing that report you become a bona fide recipient of the life of god we call it so way it is more than eternal life in truth everybody has eternal life because eternal life means life without end nobody ceases to live the life he gave us is a quality of life not just the longevity of life are we together what jesus gave us is more than eternal life it is the very very life of god that he gave us 
and apostle john was mentoring the church and he said this is the record that god hath given us eternal life he said but this life was so structured that until you encounter the son so please believers listen i'm just trying to summarize because of time the first dimension of the mandate given to every believer for your christian experience to be purposeful for you to really understand the value of dominion you have to understand this first dimension that it is the desire of god that all men be saved are we together now and so your pursuit for dominion and every other thing in between is useless until you understand this twofold mandate number one the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men so god is first concerned about the hearts of men before systems and structures please you need to understand this in order of spiritual priority the hearts of men carry more value than systems and structures if you focus on developing the sociology you focus on developing physical structures and you allow the hearts of men to be depraved you are not um, prioritizing the program of God the hearts of men the hearts of men let's look at a few scriptures if God is blessing you say amen, amen. the hearts of men Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Let me run through a few scriptures. Romans 1 16, please. Romans 1 16. Apostle Paul again is teaching the church in Rome and he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He calls it the power of God unto salvation for everyone. Please say everyone. One more time, say everyone everyone includes europe everyone includes america everyone includes africa lagos every village i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is not it has it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes to everyone that believes the gospel is the power of God to everyone that believes. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark 16, 15 please. Mark 16, 15. Jesus Christ according to Mark's synoptic account said unto them. Go ye into all the world. He says preach the gospel to every creature. It's amazing he did not say preach the gospel to men alone. He says, preach the gospel to every creature. That means there is a way to evangelize to nature. There is a way to evangelize to the ecosystem. Evangelism is not limited to speaking to men. You can command salvation over territories. Jesus gave us a mandate. He says, preach the gospel to every creature. Third scripture. Romans chapter 10 please beginning from verse 8 now I like this one Romans 10 and verse 8 it says but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and your heart that is the word of faith which we preach we're reading to 15 very quickly verse 9 verse 8 down to 15 so we'll go to verse 9 now no, don't jump to 15, just 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's what I meant. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Now, this is the spiritual protocol. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he says, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Are we together? It says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation now pay attention from verse 11 for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed now verse 12 there is no difference between the jew and the greek the same lord is rich unto all that call upon him 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved 14 now it says how then 
shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed so the major problem is that they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard it takes hearing to believe and how shall they hear without a preacher so the preacher provides the hearing of faith and the hearing of faith gives room for believing and that when you believe then the life of God is administered to you and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things can I tell you sincerely the reason I submit to you that the reason why our idea of evangelism as much as we have programs and conferences soul winning is for many people an epileptic Christian experience that just comes when opportunities provide there are many reasons among them is because we have not been living testaments of that message and that life ourselves because the way God structured impact is that when anything blesses you you automatically lose the ability to keep quiet there were times that Jesus blessed people and told them to keep quiet they were too grateful to keep quiet so your silence and your inertia as far as reaching out is more than a demonic issue it is because we are so used to a failed Christian experience are we together that our Christian experience has become a plethora a, a repetition of failure to a point that we've just camped around the religiosity but we love people too much to bring them into this hour whatever it is that does not work so we would rather talk to them about something else but not Jesus but I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that your Christian experience will be so rich that everything about your experience your life your testimonies will be compelling and it will bring men to Jesus on a daily basis in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible talks about the madman in Gadara this was a man who was mad locked up by demon spirits in caves when he had an encounter with Jesus ten cities ten cities he went to the Decapolis and announced and published the good things the same thing happened to the woman at the well she was not asked Jesus did not say go and tell the people the Bible says she left her priorities changed immediately she left whatever it is there and she ran this was the same woman who was probably ashamed and afraid because of her state being a harlot she said I don't care what you think about me I have been so transformed I cannot keep quiet come see a man I don't know his name but I can tell you what he did come see a man that told me everything that I have done the first mandate of every believer is not to build a house the first mandate is not to have children the first mandate is not even to be a preacher the first mandate is not to be a businessman please listen carefully believers need a new superior spiritual reorientation to understand the priorities of God you see let me tell you the reason why it looks like God has so lavishly invested upon others and has seemed to leave others it's not because there are any prejudices or biases with God it is because others have plunged more accurately into the heart of his program hallelujah yes. in order of priority establishing the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men whoever participates actively in making that happen I can tell you that person number one is at the epicenter of the will of God you know we live in a world today where everyone is asking what am I here for I mean what is my purpose there is a general corporate purpose for everyone before we go into all of the the geography of our witness no matter what it is that you know or do not know about your life you are not truly working in kingdom purpose if your life is not helping to establish the lordship of christ 
in the hearts of men are we together most of those we read of in the bible and in history who were lavishly empowered given so much access to the anointing of the spirit every single one of them it was because the theme the anthem of their entire life was to see jesus revealed in the hearts of people and so to empower them to be effective god did not spare in giving them access to the anointing when your heart and your desire is not to see men saved you you can give any kind of excuse you can say well i'm not really into this ministry thing for me i'm just there's, there's something about me and money we're coming to you but let me tell you you are already in error it does not matter what you are called to do the mandate to see the lordship of christ established in the hearts of men is not a mandate for evangelists it's not a mandate for preachers it's not a mandate for those who choose to go into ministry it is his desire that all men be saved i was doing a little statistics with my people back home and now you know that there are about eight billion people on earth statistic tells us as at of november and we only have about 2.6 billion professing christians not serious christians not christians that have been verified 2.6 billion please help me subtract 2.6 billion from 8 billion and yet we say jesus is coming soon and we call him king of kings and lord of lords and we say he's coming as a victorious one emmanuel God is with us. He shall reign. He shall reign. You know that song? Can I tell you? If all we have done, respectfully speaking, our crusades, our conferences, our internet evangelism has only succeeded to bring about 2.5 billion people there has to be a strategy that is not human to cover this gap within the time we have because by the strength of the flesh based on these statistics there is trouble you go to europe respectfully speaking go to the west and see the unfortunate plunge in the christian faith are we together now i mean it is it is it is going down nose diving in a disturbing way and if we do not arise there will be a generation that will rise and corporately reject jesus not as individuals as a generation they will choose that we have examined the options and we have chosen that jesus is no longer relevant in our generation the mandate to establish the lordship of christ why am i telling you this because someone has been praying for spiritual power someone has been praying for wealth someone has been praying god give me a child and god says all these things you are asking is within my power to give you but i have not found any connection to my program in your desire so your desire remains an interruption until i can find how your prayer request connects to my program let me give you a secret to securing the hand of god let your request be limited to the will of god and the program of god and you have found the way of securing God's support eternally believe me believe me believe me Lord it is my desire to see souls saved it is my desire to see nations change it's my desire to see your light fall upon continents and this will require billions and you will see God shift systems and structures and give you money that if they ask you you say honestly I'll be lying if I can explain it this one was not end it was a trust I prayed and I told God that he should I should be you you, you are explaining the basis for this level of blessing let me tell you the truth many believers are not kingdom in their approach they are church in their approach 
they are religious in their approach but the truth about it is that behind our desires respectfully speaking even our praying and fasting if vetted from the lens of the will of God many of us are just doing our things using God so God is a tool to achieve a bigger picture that bigger picture being you so if you are told fasting can help you if you are told giving can help you make more money you now say God take it this is my bribe as per the discussion and God says this is not how I work but that God will find someone in this church tonight who says Lord I may not be able to do everything but here is my life that as far as adding to the number of them who call upon your name is concerned I am here and I am available you would have prayed a prayer that heaven will come out there I don't know everything about God I am a student in the knowledge of God but I can tell you one thing you secure the hand the heart and the trust of God when your heart becomes stayed not on church not on preaching not on business there is a place for those it's a twofold mandate most of the church has gotten the second part but we have ignored the first part you believe evangelists alone will be able to save the world no by what strategy did the news of the pandemic get to the whole world that there was a global lockdown global lockdown not lockdown that was national not lockdown that was continental that was a revelation that continents can be saved in one day if an announcement can go beyond barriers look beyond the tragedy and see the writings on the wall god is showing the possibilities that under a certain condition the same thing can happen across every nation under the influence of the pandemic it did not matter whether you were a nigerian it didn't matter whether you had a company a similar thing happened in the days of noah it didn't matter what else you were doing there was only one thing that was a subject matter during the pandemic your business did not matter during the pandemic your school did not matter during the pandemic nothing else mattered only the pandemic can we replace it with jesus this is what i believe this is more than being a preacher this is the program of god hallelujah please take it high for me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift lord you can lift through me for i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore whatever you want to start lord you can start through me whatever you want to end lord you can end through me whoever you want to change lord you can change through me because i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore 
wherever you want to go Lord you can go through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can live to me this is the anthem of my life I stopped being a preacher many years ago many years ago because I found out that walking with God is greater than preaching and being an envoy of his presence a conduit of the possibilities of the kingdom was a nobler nobler pursuit listen ladies and gentlemen the Spirit of God is speaking to us right now it took someone's diligence for you to be saved remember some of our parents some of them have gone to join the cloud of witnesses some were not so educated they didn't have the privilege to be so wealthy but there was a testament that they sought God and they lived for him in all of their lives short or long the most important thing is that they spent it revealing his glory we used to laugh at them for their strategies they were so determined to see people saved they will ring bells in cars they will stand on the streets they may not have had the enlightenment and the the, the, the the kingdom understanding to refine their strategies for efficiency but the sincerity of their heart was glaring before everyone they would do anything any scriptural strategy to see people receive Jesus here is now an educated generation an enlightened generation a generation that is so embarrassed about not falling their hands to let people see Jesus we rather receive the accolades for doing other things but I'm telling you with respect to the priority of God we need to return quickly we need to reorder our lives because the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and unwise you know for many of us growing up in our Christian experience we used to have missionaries that would come and preach and they would say if you want to serve God in the mission field there will be an altar call remember a special altar call and you see people marching out as if they are headed for a funeral uh, they, they know the implication and they knew that they were not lying they would come to stand you would see people cry hug their loved ones and say that's it I mean this forever there are seven crowns that will be given to men as revealed in the Bible hallelujah seven crowns that the Bible reveals there is a Matthias crown there is a Victor's crown there are many other crowns there are crowns that will come for the faithfulness when the Bible talks about rewarding the works of men the works of men is based on a reference to what degree did it subscribe to the purposes of God not the abundance of the activity you will be surprised that if you laid hands on 20 people and only two people of those 20 you laid hands on only two of them motivated by the desire to reveal Jesus it will be recorded in heaven that you laid hands on only two people the remaining 18 was the works of the flesh when the fire of God passes through your works it will burn away the remaining 18 so there are many spiritual activities today that we think will amount to much in the spirit we will find out there are people who your one year's um, worth of work when it is vetted based on the will of God it will be that you only work for one week in 2022 so let's be careful so we do not pride ourselves in religious activities to what degree did it reveal Jesus to what degree did it end up establishing the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men hallelujah is someone learning God desires that all men be saved and whoever participates in it there are rewards already the Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 Daniel 12 and 3 please give it to us Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 and they that be wise the Bible says shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn how many 
many to righteousness that they will shine even as the stars forevermore they that turn many to righteousness this is what took some of us from our lowly estates to where he has brought us today it's not based on mundane human parameters but by the simple desire of saying lord whatever it is that you want to do may i find the pleasure of being of service to you and he says are you serious about that let's go when god holds your hands and says let's go you are not only going to go forward you will truly go upward god does not move people forward you know how a plane moves a plane does not go forward alone it starts going forward but eventually it goes forward and upward that is the destiny of any believer who takes god seriously i don't know who i'm speaking to but the lord sent me to start this conference and to charge someone you have veered off sincerely from the program of god you may not be bad but right now the circumference of your pursuit is just you and flesh i want to make it i want to do well don't get me wrong it is god's desire for you to make it more than you can even imagine but there is a protocol and there is a strategy many believers today are driven by a make it mentality i just want to make it anyhow if i make it i will give god something that's not what he's looking for ladies and gentlemen it takes more than money to please god it takes more than giving land and all of those things this is not what we're talking about there is a realm of lovers where you don't seek the hand of god you seek the heart of god there are people who are interested in his hand god let me see what is on your hand today oh i hear that there are okay let me have it what do i need to do prayer i will pray so you will see correct spiritual activities but they are not producing the result they should bring because intrinsically is being corrupted the desire is not jesus i can fast for 100 days and yet the motivation from day one is already destroyed to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 high and lifted up in my life you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 i want you to walk out of this church building tonight knowing that there are a number of souls today on earth who are at the mercy of your faithfulness no matter how effective any preacher is there are people who have been allocated who are at the mercy of your spiritual efficiency that if you refuse to rise up to this mandate there is somebody who may never know jesus it does not matter how many churches it does not matter how many conferences he said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost jesus had to account for the souls given to him all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and i will have to explain why he was lost that the scripture might be fulfilled jesus had to account for judas i wonder how many of us are going to account for people when you stand before the lord and says I gave you influence I gave you access this entire family was at the mercy of your understanding the gospel what did you do may we not be ashamed when we stand before him in the name of Jesus Christ hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins. 
incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.